Welcome back to another acting analysis Friday meters and today I'm gonna to go old school and look at the West Wing. That's right, I went through my list of all the things I want to talk about. I went all the way down to very old examples. So let's take a look at the sequences from The West Wing, season two, episode eight. First up is the discussion with CJ and these two characters. She is upset and she is having a heated discussion with these two guys here. And as she comes back, she has an interesting way of listing things where she goes, well, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. And then she does this, I love this with the hair. I don't want to do this, I don't do that. And it's just a great moment of, using an existing feature of a character to accentuate her emotion, her attitude. And some of the character rigs that are out there, there are controls for hair. So it's not always easy to do anything with clothing or hair. But in this case, if you do have a rig, it will be interesting to use that where either the character does this, they can straighten the hair, they can potentially the ponytail bring it up front and play with it or pull it. There are all kinds of things you can do with a character's attribute, but I love that. The timing rate of that and that. It all really fits into the whole discussion that she has and the, the attitude and the energy uh, in that scene. Next up is this little sequence, those couple shots, where we see the character shake hands and say bye. And you can see how the president kind of addresses someone not that high up. <laughs> it's a giant. He addresses a giant. This is someone off screen. We probably escort the person, not escort, but you know, show this person uh, the exit and then blah, blah, blah. What I like about this is that it kind of expands the scene. So you have one, two, three, in a way, right? This is the scene, these are the characters, and that's all you have. But by doing this, by looking past the person off screen, acknowledging someone that would do something again in your scene, it could be whatever, someone that actually walks in, someone where a hand gets on the shoulder to, to guide the person out to maybe a hand that comes in a piece of paper to give them something, whatever it is, but it expands the world. This makes it a bit bigger. And you can do this in just in one shot. It doesn't have to have this here, right? You can just have this, play this out, pantomime or lip sync. And just that gives us more information. It could be something where a person is looking for help. Maybe this person is really looking at this uh, person here in a more obvious way. And that is your moments to maybe have really big eyes and signal to someone that's off screen. I need help or give me something. So there's something that I can play with by not thinking that your scene is this, if that makes sense, right? It's not just this box, there's more out there and your character can acknowledge that and add something to the scene. Now, of course, you can have something where it's like here, where you start with this and with that. I mean, you could technically have your character, let's say this character here is here and the other character is here, punching over, blah, 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 they say goodbye and you have the door frame with another character in there. So maybe, maybe if you want to, you can start the shot where there's lip sync or pantomime, or whatever, and these are these, that's the focus. But you do see a third character there waiting. And now when this character does this, as an audience, we understand a bit more because maybe that person here and that gesture or look or whatever, so there's a specific connection that is now even funnier or more dramatic or whatever you want to do because we have seen the person back there in the door frame. But anyway, I like this idea and I like that, that moment here because again, it expands the scene. That is my symbol for expanding. Is this Wi-Fi? I don't know what that is. But anyway, next up is this, where this character tells this character to put this down and look at how he does it. Ready? And bloop, with the hand out. And this is why I love props. I mean, you can do this, of course, in many ways without the prop, but he holds on to this and even how he goes from here has that changed to me? So even like a change in posing, right? You have that kind of pose with one arm down, holding this, the other arm down there. Then you can do this. There's a bit of a change. Now you might argue it's a bit twinning there, but it's a change, it's a contrast, and then it's a handoff on the other hand. And then when you see this, there's a bit of a pause. There's that look there because of the conversation that they had. And then, bam, I love this. Just that moment of letting it go and having that, just that, that attitude of, all right, well, there you go, there you have it. And even if your scene is this, right, we don't have this. Maybe th this scene starts with lip sync. This person is talking, but you don't want to really animate lip sync. <laughs> so it's, it's seen from the back. So we don't see it, you don't have to animate, it's much easier. And it's all about how this person reacts to this person. And maybe it could be very similar to this line where he says, okay, leave that paper here, leave the paperwork here. And you can have that. So it's all about the pantomime reaction to this character here. So again, you can use lip sync, but you don't really have to uh, animate it. 
But my thing is always this prop now gives us a chance to enhance the mood, the 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 feelings, whatever the relationship between, between these two characters. And yes, of course, you can do this without a prop. But there's so many options and, and ideas that can come from using a prop and putting it down like that and adding that as a uh, kind of like an emphasis of your uh, character's emotion. Next up is this where she tells the people that are now off screen that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and then you hear off screen, yeah, whatever, do that. And then that's her reaction. There's so many things that I love about this is that she <laughs> also, I mean, you can see it at the beginning, but I love that almost as a reveal where these characters are blocking her and then you have that, like that is kind of the reveal with that pose and how she gets there. Look at that, with that little accent, that little up on the toes, whoop, and that little drop with the roots. Just a little accent there, and you can also see the little change of the hand. It's almost like you, I mean, she hits that pose here in this, but it's almost like this is your technical, your main pose, and that's your sub pose. So a little, little flourish, a little an extension there, but I love that little rhythm there. And then as she hears that, yeah, whatever, do whatever you want. I love how it starts with this. The anticipation and the leading of the fingers into, all right, well, let's go. But I love that she keeps that arm like this. So watch this again, how she has that pose, closes with the hand and goes, all right. But it stays like an added comedic effect of holding that pose with that arm. And I love that. And it's just not too crazy in terms of setup. And you have all the walks that is complicated animation. But I like this, I like that, that that staging. Maybe that's something you can use too, where again, like I said, characters are obscuring someone and then maybe this is the character holding something. Maybe that object is the, the added humor. And then you have potentially the, the opportunity of having lip sync of one and two characters, but one is off screen. So again, you don't have to animate it. And maybe that character says this one little thing, like she says here, and then you have mostly everything that's off screen. And then it's all about her reacting to this very physically with I love that turn too, with the head leading that turn and then the arm staying and then that exit. There you go. Classic TV show, The West Wing. There are so many seasons. Actually, I only have this part. I didn't write anything else. I should probably go back and watch that show again, although I don't have time to do that. But if you are interested in multiple characters and their different behaviors and how they talk, how there's a posture and how they do things, that show has a lot of characters with a wide range of different attitudes and like I said, character postures and, and, and just ticks and things. I think that would be really cool uh, for reference. So if you haven't watched that show yet, it's on Netflix and you can watch it if you want to. And if you have, let me know in the comments if you like the show and the things that you've taken from the characters, like, like the president's way of grabbing the jacket and putting it on. I think that's because he has a shoulder injury and he can't really do the things he you have to do put a jacket on, so that's why he puts a jacket on the way he does. I don't know. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you watch it, if there's anything else that you thought was interesting and cool. Other than that, speaking of cool, hopefully, if you feel like this is cool and you want to use that in your shots and you want me to help you and we can work together, I have workshops, link in the description with all the information. You can sign up at any time. Let's work together. And if you feel like this was interesting in some way and you want to see more, you can subscribe, hit that bell button and subscribe so you get notifications for all of my uploads because I do upload a lot except weekends. Other than that, I think if you're still here and you're still watching this, you're very patient. Thank you so much for doing that and I will see you in my next upload.